Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 791. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 788 to 791, click on the link below the video. Hey, here we have some part numbers. So we get these part numbers data dumped in some data set. But only part of it, the FFP, the YY6, are the parts we're interested in. So we need to, here's our records, we, but we get uh, this data dump. And we need a column that just says FFP, YY6, UTR in this column. So we want to build a formula to do that. The first thing is we have our part numbers here so we can look inside a text string and find it using the search function. Now normally this is what search does. Search, you say hey find this text. So I'm going to click on FFP comma and then within what? This right here. This is going to just find, look for FFP and tell it what position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it should return a 5 because that little text string right there starts at the fifth uh, position in. So I want to hit Enter, 5. Now we need to check this against all of them. So we're just going to do a little array here. Find what text? Oh, I'm going to tell them all. Now what this does is we're putting four cell references into an argument find text that ex is expecting one cell reference or one text string, right? So the fact that we give it four, it'll give us four results, meaning it should give us error, error, five, error. And now I'm going to use the F9 key. I've highlighted this and I'm going to hit F9 that evaluates so we can see what's going on here and we get a value, value five and value. Now we have a number right here. We can use the fact that that's the third position and do some sort of lookup function. Uh, I'm going to control Z here, but I'd like to change this, and this is an array created inside the uh, our formula, and so I want to change that slightly. I want to say 1 divided by. Now 1 divided by any, so 1 divided by 10 or 20 or 255, they're all going to be numbers less than 0. If I hit the F9 key, I'm going to get value and 0.2, so there's always going to be a number smaller than 1. Now, we're going to use that fact that's an array, and I'm going to look up the number 2. And the lookup function I'm going to use is lookup. Lookup, we can give it a lookup value, and I'm going to give it 2, comma, and then it's going to look through this lookup vector right here, and it's going to find that point 0.2. Now, why 2? Well, 2 is bigger than any, is, is always going to be bigger than the numbers created from this array here. And what happens? lookup, just like VLOOKUP and MATCH when doing approximate match, if this value is bigger than anything in the array, it always takes the last one. In our case, it'll just find the number. All right? So I'm going to take that. I actually want to lock these. I'm going to hit the F4 key there and there. All right, so we have our lookup vector. And now the lookup function is great because you can give it a lookup vector and a result vector, and there's our results. Those are the things we want to return. If you know how to use VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP has the first column and then all the values to return to the cell are together in one table. But here, lookup is great because you can separate the two. Now I'm going to have to hit F4 here, close parentheses. Contro um, and lookup also is one of the rare functions like sum, product, and index that have the ability to hold an array and the keystrokes control shift enter are not required. So I'm just going to enter and double click and send it down. Wow, that's pretty cool there. Now we need to deal with this NA. In 2007 and 2010, it is easy. Really, this is one of the reasons to go out, run out, and get uh, Excel 2007 or 10. We're just going to use the if error function. That's it, value. We come to the end. The value is just that formula. Any Anytime it comes out to an error, you have to type a comma. So there's a comma there. And the value for the error is just going to be double quotes. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. That is nice. Now, what if you didn't have uh, 2007 or 10? Well, we could actually, yeah, I'm going to copy this little piece. We can build a slightly different formula. I'm going to Control CC to open up the clipboard. If not, you can click, click right there or however you open it. I'm going to need two different pieces here. I want that inside search part, and I want the lookup. Now, oftentimes when you have earlier formulas, you run this whole thing in is error, uh, but I'm not going to do that. We only need the little search part. I'm going to say equals if, and I'm going to count, and then paste this 
right here. This is the piece of the formula that I want there. That's the search. Remember, that's returning four things, error and a number. So count counts numbers. If it's all errors, it'll give zero. If it uh, finds a number, it'll return the number one. So that'll work as a trigger uh, for our true and false. So one is true, zero is false, comma. And then the value of true, I'm going to do paste this piece, because that's the lookup formula I want to run, comma, otherwise. And then value of false double quote. Uh, and I'm going to have to run this as an array formula because this search is returning an array and count is not going to be able to handle that. So I have to use the keystrokes Control Shift and Enter. Now, when I Control Shift Enter, I'm telling Excel that I'm doing an array formula. If you look up in the formula bar, these curly brackets are automatically put in. You can't type them in. And that's Excel telling you, oh, I understood. This is an array formula. So when I double click and send that down, that will work. Now, let's look at another uh, potential solution. This comes straight from the Mr. Excel message board, Hot Pepper, Total Excel Master. Some amazing things I've seen him post over the years. Uh, he used the choose function and uh, this lookup, something similar to this lookup in an interesting way. Let's look at the choose function. Now, choose function, you usually give it uh, a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you put in five values. Now, what's so cool about choose is they can be words, numbers, formulas, functions, all, uh, uh, ranges, defined names, all sorts of things. But what we want to do is we want to give it the index number. We want two things, because remember, what do we want? We either want this uh, return result or a blank. Now, this lookup, actually, before I do choose, equals lookup. Let's take a look at this. When I copy this down, you know, that's a big fancy formula right there, but all it's doing is returning a single value. So I want to put this into the choose and the double quotes for blank. All right, so I'm going to delete this and go equals choose. I should just uh, center this a little bit better. Right? So the index number, usually you give it 1, 2, 3, but we're going to give it an array, an array syntax. That's an open curly bracket, 1, 2, close curly bracket. Now, when I give it a 1 and a 2 in array uh, curly brackets like this, that means please give me both the first and second item. So watch this, comma, and I'm going to give it a double quote for the first value, comma, and then I'm going to click on this. Now, this is kind of bizarre here, right? Value 2, value 1. Well, remember, all lookup is doing is returning a single value, and this is a single value. So in essence, what choose is going to do, it's, it's going to say, hey, give me both of these, and it's separated by a comma here, so it's as if it was in columns. There'll, it'll be a lookup range that only has two items, a blank and the item we're interested in. Now, if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see, sure enough, that's what it did, Control Z. You know, I could copy this down, Control Shift Enter, uh, and look at it down here, F9. You could see that it gives us a slightly different two item array, right? A blank and then this UTR. I'm going to click Escape up here. So now, that is the range, uh, a two item range. So we're going to say lookup again. And now we want to give it a, uh, the biggest possible value so that it always takes the last text item. Now, when lookup returns an error, that's not a text item. So it'll look for this blank, because that blank is, even though it's blank, it's still a null size text string. Right? So lookup, I'm going to give it something like the biggest possible text item that I can think of, and that is repeat. And I'm going to repeat the letter Z 255 times. Now, why 255? Because if only I could spell. There's the repeat function. So repeat function takes whatever you put right here, and then you tell it how many times to repeat it. So it's going to repeat the, Z, the letter Z 255 times. Now, why 255? Because the biggest item that look up can handle in its lookup array is 255 characters, comma. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to close parentheses. Another cool thing about lookup 
is notice there's in square brackets here on the result vector, which means it is optional. So now we're just looking up in that range right there. Two items, we have something real, the biggest text thing we ever could think of, and it's always going to find the last one, which means it's always going to take the lookup value because it's the second item, which is the last one. Unless it's an error, then it's going to take the text. Now I'm going to control enter, not control shift enter, and double click and send it down. That is simply amazing. So another way, if you are in earlier versions, by all means, this is the coolest if error. Uh, just a great addition in 2007. But I don't know, that's kind of cool from Hot Pepper at the Mr. Excel message board. All right, we'll see you next trick.